Welcome back. Let's look at the 2019 version of the Algebra 1 EOC. All questions from reporting category number three. Let's get started. Number three, which value of x makes the equation 1.25 times 4x minus 10 equals 7.5 true? If you're good at solving equations, absolutely distribute your 1.25 and get x all by itself. If you struggle, here's some test taking strategies that might help you. Go through your answer choices. When you have a multiple choice test and you're asked to solve for the value of x, go through your answer choices. Plug in these values for x. I really like to store in a number for x. And if you really want some calculator strategies for this particular reporting category, refer to the 2017 version uh, video, which I'll put a little card up in the upper right corner. If you want to click on that, maybe watch the first five minutes of the video. It'll give you some calculator tips for this reporting category. So we're going to store in a number for x, whatever number you want, store it in for x. I'm going to type in exactly what I see on this side of the equal sign, and I'm going to get a number. And when I, I'm actually going to get 7.5. So when I store in 4 for x, that's what I get on this side of the equal sign. I get 7.5, and 7.5 equals 7.5, therefore that's my answer. All of these other values, if I store them in for x, I do not get 7.5. I get a different number, which means those aren't my answer choices. So if you can actually solve for x, it's very quick. But if you have to use this strategy, it's a little more time consuming, but it's worth it because you will absolutely get the answer right. Let's move on to number six. What is the equation in slope intercept form of the line that passes through the points negative four, two and 12, six? So test taking strategy, when you're given two points, plug them into stat, L1 and L2, negative four, two and 12, six. Do a linear regression. Stat, calc, lin reg, and what do you get? Y equals 0.25x plus three. I'm trying to go through this video quickly because we've done a lot of problems like this in the 2017 version and the 2018 version. So hopefully if you've watched those videos by now, you really know what I'm talking about and you're getting more comfortable with this. Number 10. What is the equation in slope-intercept form of the line that crosses the x-axis at 36, okay, 36, 0? Wouldn't that be the point if that's where it crosses the x-axis? That's the x value. That's the y value on the x-axis, right? I'm not going up or down at all, so any x-intercept is going to have a y value of 0 and is perpendicular to the line represented by y equals negative four ninths x plus five. Okay, we have to know there is always either a parallel question or a perpendicular question on an EOC, one or the other, and you need to know parallel lines have the same slope, perpendicular lines have the opposite reciprocal slope. What is opposite reciprocal? Okay, well in this problem, the slope is negative four over nine, so the slope of a line that's perpendicular to this, opposite, so it's going to be positive, reciprocal, take that fraction and flip it, it's going to be 9 over 4. So I'm looking for an equation with a slope of 9 over 4. In that case, I can eliminate f and g, that is a slope of 4 over 9 and 4 over 9. I'm looking for a slope of 9 over 4. Okay, so now that I've eliminated my answer choices and I've only got two left, y is already solved for, can I plug them into y equals? Sure, plug each one into y equals and see which one contains this point in your table of values. So second graph will get you there and you're actually gonna find that j will give you this point in your table of values. Looking at number 11. A student worked out at a gym continuously for 50 minutes. The graph shows the remaining percentage of the workout as a linear function of x, the time in minutes. Which answer choice best describes the domain? What do I want you to write above domain? 
x values. And range, what do I want you to write above range? y values of the function for this situation. Okay, so my domain, how far left to how far right? 0 to 50. That's what we're looking at. 0 to 50. So if I look at A, domain says all real numbers greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 100. Nope. B says domain is negative 2. Nope. C says domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 50. That's the only one that's right so far. And D, our domain says it's 100. Nope. C is my answer. I don't even need to look at the range, but since it's an Algebra 1 EOC and I really want to make sure I'm getting the answer right, let's go ahead and make sure we got the answer right. So the range says all real numbers greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 100. 0 to 100. Awesome. That's right too. Let's go on to number 15. We are rocking and rolling. A grill at a barbecue restaurant will be used to cook sausage links that are two pounds each and briskets that are six pounds each. No more than 120 pounds of sausage links and briskets will be cooked on the grill. Oh, great. Inequality. No more than. Automatically, this is a difficult question because there's an inequality involved. So the question says, which inequality represents all possible combinations of X, the number of sausage links, that will be cooked on the grill and why the number of briskets that will also be cooked. In a word problem, write your labels. What do the variables represent? In this case, x is the number of sausage links and y is the number of briskets. Okay, so let's see. Now that we know our, um, our variables, let's go back and see if we can kind of dissect this a little more. So a grill at a barbecue restaurant will be used to, sausage links are two pounds each. Well, that's probably a number that's gonna be right next to my variable. Sausage links are two pounds each times the number of sausage links. Okay, that makes sense. And briskets are six pounds each. Okay, that's probably a number that goes in front of that variable. Okay, six pounds times the number of briskets. Okay, so actually we're talking about pounds here. So if I add them together, no more than 120 pounds of sausage links. So this really is the weight, no more than. So that means it needs to be less than or equal to 120 pounds. Which one shows that? B, that's your answer. Number 23, the graph of a linear function is shown on the grid. Which equation is best represented by this graph? You need to be able to solve for y. Then you can graph it and see which answer choice matches the graph. Your answer choice is actually D. Now, I'm going through this quickly. When it comes to a test, you're going to have to go through this answer, A, nope, not that, B, nope, not that, C, nope, not that, and then you get to D. And let's look at this. If I'm going to solve for y and put it in slope intercept form, then I need to distribute this five over seven and I get five over seven times x minus five. And then I'm gonna add two and I get five over seven x minus three. Okay, so now that I've solved for y, I can plug it into y equals on my calculator and see if it matches, which obviously it does. I have a y-intercept of negative 3, and I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5 over 7. That's my rise over run. That is my correct answer. Okay, number 25. A college student completed some courses worth three credits and some courses worth four credits. The student earned a total of 59 credits after completing 18 courses. Okay, this looks to me like a system of equations problem because we're talking about credits and courses. We're talking about two different things. Okay, so if we're talking about two different things, how many courses, so we're looking for the number of courses, where three credits did the student complete? 
Okay, well, X and Y must represent the number of courses of something. So some courses were worth three credits. Well, let's let X equal the three, a three credit course or the number, which means Y is going to equal a four credit course. Okay, so now we've got to come up with our equations. Those are our two different variables. What are our equations? Hmm, 18 total courses. Okay, so the number of three credit courses plus the number of four credit courses should be 18. Okay, there's my number equation. Looks like I'm going to have a credit equation. So the number, let's see, three credit courses are worth three credits. So three credits time the num times the number of three credit courses plus four credits times the number of four credit courses should be equal to 59 credits. In this particular problem, you need to solve for y in this equation, solve for y in this equation, graph it, and find the point of intersection. And I discuss how to do this in the 2017 and 18 versions of the EOC. But when you solve for y in this first equation, you're gonna get negative x plus 18. And in the second equation, you're gonna get negative 3 fourths x plus 14.75. So graph those and find your point of intersection. How many three credit courses? Okay or courses worth three credits. Well, X value is what's worth three credits. So we're looking for the, so the X value in our solution, and that's gonna be 13. Number 30, a system of equations is graphed on the grid. Which system of equations does the graph represent? Okay, awesome. The 2019 version, all of my equations are already solved for y. I don't have to go through my answer choices and solve for y. That makes this question, or question automatically easier. So you can go through your answer choices and your answer is actually j. Again, if y is solved for, you can always plug it into your calculator and look at your graph. But for this one right here, y equals x plus 4 right here, y-intercept of 4, slope of 1x, and then here's my y-intercept of negative 4, slope of negative 2, rise 1, run 2, or you can go down 2, over 1, rise 2, run 1, sorry, or down 2, over 1. So j is my answer. If you're going to plug this into y equals on your calculator, you really want to make sure that the points or what they are. Sometimes it's difficult to see on your calculator, so I might look at a table of values and I just might make sure, hey, 0, 4 is a point on that um, in that table. Negative 1, negative 2, that's a point in that table. Just stuff like that. Okay, 32. The table shows the amount of pet food in cups remaining in an automatic feeder as a function of the number of meals the feeder has dispensed. Okay, table of values, What's my strategy? Plug it into L1, L2, stat, linreg, stat, calc, linreg, based on the table which function models this situation, in which case you will get F. If you don't like doing that, you can go through your answer choices. Remember F of X, F of N, that's fancy schmancy for Y. Plug it into Y equals. Y equals negative 3x plus 24. Look at your table of values. It'll contain every single one of these points. Number 37. What is the value of x in the solution to this system of equations? You must be able to solve for y. Y is solved for in this one. In our other one, 3x minus 5y. How do we solve for y? Well, I'm going to subtract 3x. putting it in slope-intercept form so that x term goes first. Now what am I going to do? Divide everything by negative 5. y equals positive 3 fifths x. And if you struggle with that part, negative 3 divided by negative 5, math, enter, enter, that'll tell you positive 3 over 5. Minus 4.4. So I'm going to plug in this value, or this equation, into y equals. Then I'm going to plug in 
this equation into y equals, and I'm going to find the point of intersection, second calc or second trace. Go down to intersect, enter, 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 and what is the value of x? Make sure you're choosing the right value. Is it asking for the x? Is it asking for the y? Is it asking for both? In this case, it's asking for x, and your answer is C. Number 42, there's no trick here. You have to be able to solve an equation. So what do I need to do? When nothing is in front of that, those parentheses, I can put a 1 there. And in this case, I'm going to distribute a negative 1. Negative 6m minus 8 equals, and then on this side, I'm going to distribute this 4. And I get 4 times 17 is 68 minus 4m. And now I'm just going to solve for m. So I'm going to add 4m to both sides, and notice I only write it below its like term. So negative 2m minus 8 equals 68. And then I'm going to add 8. Negative 2m equals 76. And then what do I do? Divide by negative 2. And what is 76 divided by negative 2? It's negative 38. So since this is a griddable, look at these lovely griddables that I'm drawing. There's a plus, minus, that's what it looks like. And how do I fill this in? Negative 38. Okay. Next problem. What is the equation slope-intercept form of the line that passes through the point 5, 0 and is parallel? Okay, parallel lines have the same slope. So if they have the same slope, my slope in this case is 1.2, the slope of line parallel to this is also going to have a slope of 1.2, not this one, and not this one. So my answers are A or C. So plug them into y equals and see which one contains the point 5, 0. And that's going to be A. When x is 5, y is 0. Number 51. A customer at a store paid $64 for three large candles and four small candles. At the same store, a second customer paid four more dollars than the first customer for one large candle and eight small candles. The price of each large candle is the same and the price of each small candle is the same. Which system of equations can be used to find the price in dollars of each large candle x? Hmm. Large candle price and each small candle y. Small candle, and it said price, so I'm gonna put a little dollar sign there to let me know, hey, we're talking about the price of this. Okay, we're talking about two different things, told me there was two different variables, and it's just asking for which system of equations would we use to solve, which is great because we don't actually have to solve it. We just have to make sure we can set it up. And if you can at least set up one equation, then you can eliminate answer choices. So let's look at this first sentence here. A customer at a store paid $64 for three large candles, four small candles. Okay, so large candles are X. So three large candles times the price of a large candle plus four small candles. So four small candles times the price of a small candle. And then how much did this customer pay? $64. Okay, 3x plus 4y equals 64. Uh, do we see that in any of these problems? 3x plus 4y equals 64. I see that right here and I see that right here. I don't see it anywhere else. Those are not my answers. So we can at least eliminate answer choices when we set up one equation. So let's set up the other equation. At the same store, a second customer paid four more dollars than the first customer. So how much did this customer pay? If he paid four more dollars, then 64 plus four is 68. This customer paid $68. One large candle, eight small candles. That's what he bought. One large candle. So one times X plus eight small candles, eight times Y equals 68. Which one has that? Answer choice C. There you go. Okay. So actually, if you chose, if you were looking at D, this is four dollars less than the first 
customer. That's pretty tricky. Okay, this is the last question. Number 54, the total distance in centimeters a toy robot moves varies directly with the time in seconds. Varies directly. Proportion time. Set up a proportion. X over Y equals X over Y. The toy robot moves a total distance of 264 centimeters in 11 seconds. What is the time in seconds the toy robot moves when the total distance is 408 centimeters? Okay, so 264 centimeters in 11 seconds. And let's just write our labels. So that's our first ratio, right? 264 centimeters in 11 seconds. So what's the time in seconds? Okay. We're looking for this. I'll put an S there. That's an S. You know what? I can I can make a better S. S. What is the time in seconds the toy robot moves when the total distance is 408 centimeters? There's your proportion. Solve it. I'm assuming you know how to solve a proportion, but you can set up your equations. 264 times S equals 408 times 11 and you'll end up getting 4,488. And when you divide by 264, you get 17. Your answer is G. And that concludes all questions from the 2019 version of the Algebra 1 EOC reporting category number three. I hope it was helpful.